I'm continuing my video series on the fake history of Saint Augustine. This is part 4. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all to get the full picture. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Is there any evidence at all that Flegler built the major buildings of St. Augustine? Following a rigorous search for construction photos, I only found two photos, of questionable value. If a photographer took these two photos, wouldn't they have taken more? Even so, these photos appear to debunk my theory, despite this map I discussed in the previous video. Except, that this image is undated, and I was unable to find any scholarly source for it. I took it from the stock photo website Alamy. An oddity. The building was fully finished, while the surroundings are undeveloped. Instead of streets, sidewalks, electricity poles and lamps, we find mud. This image, however, has signs of old-school photo manipulation and or a photo error. I can see the outline of the faded out towers. The photo does not show the construction of the hotel, as some web pages say. It shows the construction of the garden in front of it, if anything. Again, we see a fully complete building, surrounded by dirt as if it had been excavated or unearthed, rather than built. Where do we normally build structures without the benefit of streets? How is it possible to build this in a very short time, without streets to transport materials? And where are the architectural designs for these buildings? The government website floridamemory.com has apparently misstated several images of the Alcazar Hotel. Either that, or it wasn't built in 1888. This is from an 1887 ad for an electric bath at the Alcazar Hotel, pretty early for a hotel that was built in 1888. Here's a menu I found of the Hotel Ponce de Leon. It's dated January 10, 1888. Interesting, considering that it was completed later in the year. They must have been really impatient to get going if they'd start serving food while the place was still a construction site. Source of this piece of evidence is a page titled Historic Photos of St. Augustine on the website Wyoming Tales and Trails. This drawing is dated to 1887. It's claimed to be an architectural drawing of how it's supposed to look like, and this is why the buildings in front of it can't be found on later photographs. Close up. Here's from another historical website. A photo said to be from the 1860s, with a Flagler building in the background. I guess one could say that all of these are errors. But at some point, the errors become so many, you ask yourself whether the official narrative is an error. Why would a respected publication as the St. Augustine record be mistaken by two decades? This photograph is from the website of the Museum of St. Augustine, and it's undated. You'd think a museum would care to date images. Historians and governments complain about the rise of conspiracy theories, but it's their own negligence that gives rise to them. The image looks older than the 1880s. In the distance mid-photo, you see the two towers of the Ponce de Leon and the chimney stack not far from it. A little further to the right, the cathedral. At center left, a strange pillar with which I'm not familiar. Nor can I explain why the town is almost devoid of people, except for two or three people standing in the front. There are many photos from that time showing towns and cities devoid of people, as shown by many researchers. One theory is that these places were artificially repopulated after a great reset or cataclysm. Others would probably say the photo must have been taken early morning before people woke up. But there are hundreds of other 1840s to 1870s photos of entire cities being empty. This is another undated photo that looks older than 1888 and shows the Alcazar. It's funny how the photos that look really old are often posted on historical websites without a date. The antenna-like crosses atop the Ponce de Leon Hotel also look interesting. This is the Methodist Church in Carrera Street, across an empty lot. The church still stands today. This too is claimed to have been built within one year in 1886 by Henry Flagler as a Methodist church. It's amazing that Flagler would build both a Presbyterian church and a Methodist church. 
Why would a lifelong Presbyterian build a church in a denomination at odds with his own? It's mind-boggling just how many buildings these folks churned out between 1886 and 1888. What was used to transport the materials? Where did the rocks come from? How many people were employed? I found no records of any of it. One book about Flegler claims that the rocks were hauled from Anastasia Island, right across from St. Augustine. No evidence is provided. How were the rocks transported before a bridge was built? The Bridge of Lyons was built in 1927. From the page. Prior to the Bridge of Lyons in 1925, there was a wooden bridge, called simply, the Bridge to Anastasia Island, or South Beach Railroad Bridge. It was built in 1895, and after a major renovation in 1904, the bridge could accommodate a trolley. As I found no mention of bridges existing in 1888, I wonder how this much material was transported from the island. Is it possible that the Great Wall and towers around St. Augustine were repurposed and used by Flegler as building materials? That's my theory for now. This postcard was published by Geo Barker of Niagara Falls, New York. The photo won a grand prize diamond badge in 1887 and a gold medal in Paris 1889, according to the stamps on it. How is it possible that it won a prize in 1887 when the hotel was built in 1888? And why is the area around the hotel fully developed when, according to photos allegedly made later, it was all mud? Even at the copyright date of the postcard itself, 1889, the area wasn't yet fully developed, according to other photos. If this postcard is accurate, it would mean the photos showing undeveloped dirt lots are not from 1888 or 1889. A late 1800s photo of streets being laid. We built these fantastic structures, now let's build some really simple streets. <laughs> One of the problems here is that I spent hours looking for images of St. Augustine before Henry Flegler came along to save the day, but I found hardly any. Here's one image set to be from 1855, but it doesn't show downtown. I found many images of the promenade at the sea and next to none of downtown, almost as if they had been removed. I went through search engines typing St. Augustine and every single year, as in 1824, 1854, 1867, 1760. I came up with almost nothing. If you guys find this video interesting, I'll make a part 5.